Hey everyone, this is Shreyas and welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to take you through Oxygen OS 12 and all of its features. Now over here, you can see that I have Oxygen OS 12 installed over here with Android version 12. For the uninitiated, this is the first time Oppo and OnePlus are going to join their code base and make their Oxygen OS. And you can see over here, it is running on Android 12 and this is the Easter egg. Now personally, I'm not a huge fan of this particular change that OnePlus has done for their own uh, brand. But I have covered a lot of these changes and my grievances about this particular OS and the changes uh, following it up in my Oxygen OS 12 Beta 1 review. Now I have covered that it should pop up in a card right over here uh, around this time. So you can check that out to get context of what I'm going to complain about and hopefully I don't end up ranting too much about this particular software update. Now I'm going to do this particular review in four major parts. One is the UI specific changes which is specific to Oxygen OS 12. Second will be Android 12 features which have been added. Third will be camera features which have been added. At the end, I will mention all the positives and overall negatives and bugs if any, which I have identified. So stay tuned till the end. So first, let's start with the UI based features. Now you have a lot of personalization options over here and, uh, and especially with the option of the theme store which I am not going to open because you see what comes up and it's not just about that but if you have to see the a lot of accesses are required even to read the privacy policy statement and I'm not a fan of that. Now unfortunately another problem is that even changing things like the wallpaper requires you to accept a privacy policy now i understand giving access to the folders because no matter what you do with your wallpapers it has to be locally changed so you need to give access to your folders and storage but that being a part of a privacy policy and that privacy pol policy being owned by another third party service provider is something i have a problem with now that will again come up in my beta video i have covered that but that's something i wanted to say apart from that you have uh, changes like icons over here widgets and layout you do not have home setting changes over here unfortunately you have to go into the settings individually and do the same so in icons i absolutely hated the default icon uh, so over here in the icons if i set to default um, i absolutely hated it because of that google dialer and google contacts uh, icons over here it's disgusting so i settled for the pebble icon which was relatively better but i don't like the camera icon over here <laughs> again but it's better in terms of the other icons another thing is that you have customizations like the size over here the name and the app name size as well you can see that you can pull them up or down you have something called as art plus icon which is again a part of third party apps will take you to the theme store and you have to accept those privacy policies to get them working on your phone apart from that you have some features like swiping up to move all of your icons up and down so you can see over here so i don't personally want that or like that so i like it like here and you have to press done the only way to remove a widget now is to hit remove and then you have to again hit remove over here to confirm the same and then only it gets removed another uh, change which is required over here is the columns the number of columns have been reduced to uh, four and it used to be five previously and you have the addition of the names over here you had a small pill over here which could help navigate through the same um, although I appreciate it but I would not like this in my app drawer personally the next major change in terms of UI is in terms of dark mode so if I go into display uh, dark mode is already selected and you have dark mode settings now you have three gradients over here you have medium you can see it turned a bit into dark gray and not amulet black and this is even more subtle a lot of phones are adopting this kind of a dark mode instead of true black i personally prefer true black so that's what i'm gonna set to and you have adaptive uh, contrast as well as per the brightness of your environment it will change i did not want it so i kept it to that and you have another option to tweak your wallpapers as well 
few more uh, addition in features is something like partial screenshots oneplus owners will know that if you swipe with three fingers you get a full screenshot that already exists now on addition to that you can do few more things like hold three fingers down and pull till a particular area so you get a partial screenshot over here the other thing which is majorly added over here is work life balance you can see life mode and work mode you can trigger this based on your time wi-fi network or your location as well and you can have your gmail accounts which will be active only during that day and stuff like that this could be useful i personally like it this is a welcome feature this has been added with more uh, features in this particular iteration next you have shelf so you can swipe down from the right top corner only and get access to this shelf you have a few oneplus specific widgets which can be populated here unfortunately these widgets cannot come to your home screen they are shelf specific only unfortunately you can change a few things like customize the text over here a few more widgets like i have added over here the youtube music widget you can see the google news widget i have added and some things like data usage and data storage and oneplus notes etc so you can customize those as well from this particular menu so that's a new addition next you have split screen gesture now this could be useful now if you take three fingers and swipe up it will shrink this and your recents menu should come up if not let's say let's just open another app now you can see that it's a very quick gestures to go into multi-screen or multi-window mode so i put i personally like it now you have some privacy features added as well so if i go into privacy you can see app lock hide apps and private safe private safe is going to be a locally encrypted uh, folder like secure folder or locked folder on Samsung and Pixel phones respectively. And you have your other privacy uh, features listed over here also, which I will visit to the later part of the video. Another thing you obviously have is the theme store, which I'm not gonna open and use myself because I don't want to give in to the privacy policies there. The next thing I personally did not like at all is the settings menu. The settings menu has completely changed. You don't see any details about the sub menus over here, which I do not like. Some few more have been added or they have been moved around as well and you can see all the icons and the details over here have changed which i do not personally like another thing is that personalization is a whole new thing over here again you have access to the theme store and um, you know other customizations like always on display uh, whatever the fonts are given and the boldness of the fonts honestly you can change your fingerprint animation over here unfortunately even using this particular menu required me to accept a particular privacy policy so again that is the annoyances continue so the next thing that bothered me is the share sheet so when i go into sharing you can see over here when i go into more this share sheet by oneplus is so horrible usually it used to be vertically oriented now you could do that but not anymore unfortunately you do get a huge nearby share option i don't think that is necessary as well but you have to horizontally scroll all this and yeah this is the problem with it you have to horizontally scroll through it and it's such a pain to me honestly it's horrible design apart from the inconveniences few things that are missing from the ui is the haptics on the brightness slider and the volume slider i had covered it in my 9 pro full review So you can check from that how it used to be a gradual decrease and increase in the haptic feedback when you had regular haptics on but that's gone unfortunately and the font is the last and final thing i would like to rant and complain about i absolutely hate it now coming to the android 12 specific features which have been added over here you can see you have the camera and mic access uh, they weren't initially added over here so you can go into the pencil icon edit and add these over here so you can see that you know there is even your stock apps cannot access your camera and mic so let's just start a video and you can see again it's asking me to unlock the microphone which is not happening so that's the advantage of the uh, apps and camera and if you are in doubt if it's working or not let me just go to the front camera so now you saw the ring over here which says is the front camera but it's completely blank because there is no camera access
So these are Android 12 features which got added. Another one will be under privacy and this is the privacy dashboard where you get a breakdown of what all apps used all of your permissions so you can you know use them accordingly and tweak them so that you have control over your privacy overall and if not you are at least informed the next thing is material you widgets now this is the widget pick picker over here it blurs the background of the wallpaper and takes you over here it is not in a card method like it was seen in other android 12 you know ui is like one ui and pixel stock experience so i have a few uh, new web widgets over here the now playing widget from youtube music it has a few of your recently played albums this is the new drive widget or google keep widget is also similar and this is dynamic it changes its shape if i just remove this one um, this will again change its shape according to how big it is you can see here and this is the conversations widget which is useful i personally like it so yeah that's about widgets so these are android 12 features now let's go to the camera and speak about some of the camera specific features so this is the front camera as you can see few things have been added so when i flip the camera there is a ai mode by default so this is a color os specific feature if i'm correct now another thing which got added which i personally like is now pro mode is unfortunately called expert mode but what is good is over here you have a toggle for switching up all your lenses so this is the ultra wide lens and this is a telephoto lens and yes it is not just cropping into the main lens it is actually using the telephoto lens i have tried it out so that's something positive previously you could only use the primary or the wide camera and now you can use all three lenses with the pro mode which i personally really appreciate next thing which has gotten added is in portrait mode you have this particular setting to set the amount of depth that you can do uh, apart from that if i go back in any particular uh, scene or type of um, camera mode you can add retouching to the face filters right from here so that's something if you appreciate it but unfortunately the clean and simple camera ui has been changed and i do not personally like it now i will come down directly to the positives and the negatives personally i do like the animations they are smooth they are a bit slower which i do not really like but another thing which i liked is the transition effect so if you can see over here uh, there is a quick blur while going out of the app into the home screen so i will try to play in slow-mo the blur effect is something that gives a nice effect and the transition when you pull down the quick toggles you can see the zoom out in the wallpaper as well that is something nice and a lot of customizations have been added with uh, the access to all three lenses in the pro mode in the camera app but the other part which i do not like and is the cons of this particular update according to me is the ui absolutely looks disgusting it is a lot more crowded the app icons are small uh, somewhere and somewhere it's too big the font is something that i do not appreciate it's too bold it was unnecessary stock google icons have been tweaked in their icon packs which is set by default which i do not like another problem is on aod the always on screen if i place my finger it unlocks but in the always on display after a certain while this disappears which i do not really like and now if i place my finger it is not going to unlock i have to place my finger again to unlock this wasn't there in oxygen os 11 removal of haptics uh, somewhere like the brightness slider as i mentioned and the volume slider is something i do not like and the clean unique perspective and the identity of oxygen os is unfortunately gone and the privacy policies attached to all of these services or some features of oxygen os is something that is really annoying i do not personally appreciate it and i don't want to use this particular version of oxygen os personally so that's about it for this particular video i hope you like this particular video and you got a lot to to know out of it let me know how you feel about this particular update down in the comments below and let's talk over there so that's been it for this particular video today thank you for watching and i'll catch you in the next one